Thank you. Hi, well, everyone, and welcome to our podcast. Today, I have the pleasure to have Gaurav over here. So Gaurav is an um, experienced project manager, and he has a lot of experience in the solar industry for the last eight years. He has also uh, a lot of energy in the power industry as such. And today, it's my great honor to be that he is here, and um, we can discuss a lot of uh, solar problems that are arising in India because that's where his expertise lies. And as I learned from him that India is really going to be a solar power hub in the next five years. So that's a great opportunity for us to uh, learn from him. And without further ado, uh, Gaurav, welcome to the podcast. Thank you, thank you, Tanisha. Actually, it's an honor to be here. And thank you for that wonderful introduction for me. Uh, it's uh, it's an, been a pleasure to be here and to discuss some of the important issues and aspects of energy, solar energy specifically, mm -hmm. in the current uh, situations. Yeah, so, of course. Mm -hmm. About me, uh, it has been 17 years of experience, mostly in the power industry. And... Uh, if uh, we talk about solar, uh, I've been in solar industry since last eight years. And mm -hmm. it has been extensive uh, experience because I have started with uh, being a solar developer. Then I joined an organization where I was looking up as a contractor, as a EPC contractor. Mm -hmm. And then I'm being part of EPC contractor, part of the solar projects. Mm -hmm. So in in this journey, I've been up, uh, got opportunity to work for some international projects also. Mm -hmm. I have managed some projects in Dubai and one of them in Jordan. Mm -hmm. And in India or Pan India, I have done a lot of solar projects. So mm -hmm. it has been a very good experience in solar industries and it's ever growing industry mm -hmm. i see so what kind of uh, uh, i know your by uh, background you were an electrical or electronics engineer right uh, so how did that journey happen like what 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 is that uh, technology that you develop as a solar developer if i ask you <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, you are right. Actually, I'm uh, an electrical and electronics engineer mm -hmm. by education. And uh, just how I got opportunity to uh, join a solar uh, developer where uh, I joined as a manager managing the project. Uh, Technology-wise, I have uh, been working in multiple projects where different kind of technologies, whether it is related to the solar panel, different kinds of solar panel, mm -hmm. or the kind of structure on which the solar panel is going to be mounted. Maybe uh, it's a single axis, or it's a tilted one, or mm -hmm. the fixed structure, okay. where, where the modules are fixed, there is no movement throughout the day, while in single axis trackers, the modules moves all throughout the day as per the position of the sun. Oh, okay. So maximum maximum uh, utilization of solar energy can be done. Mm -hmm. I see. So that's mostly that you had to monitor. Uh, in, in yeah, for that, panels. we have mm -hmm. the monitoring system which monitors the positioning and the atmosphere and the location of the sun. Mm -hmm. And accordingly, the uh, mostly uh, it uh, rotates on a motor mm -hmm. and complete set rotates as per the positioning of the sun. It's uh, something like sunflower. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's yeah. <laughs> always facing towards the sun. Right. Solar trackers are similar to the sunflower. So they oh, okay. always towards the sun so that they can absorb maximum uh, solar energy and uh, generate a lot of 
energy or generate efficient energies throughout the day. Mm -hmm. I see. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay, that's uh, really interesting. I did read about it, but uh, thanks for explaining this one. Uh, so maybe, Gaurav, we can go to a case study that you have worked recently or you have worked in the past. Um, I I did wanted to, we can discuss any case study, but I know we were discussing about transmission lines and asset owners and somehow they were related. So if you can give me that uh, interesting case study, <laughs> talk about it a little bit. Sure, Tanishta. That, that will be, uh, I will also be interested in sharing that uh, that part of the solar. Uh -huh. yeah. Because um, let me uh, show the structure of solar industry in India. Mm -hmm. So mostly we have the solar developer who is developing the plant or investing to the plant. Mm -hmm. Who is on, uh, the investor who invest in making that solar plant is called developer hmm. then their transmission state transmission company mm -hmm. in the uh, in the transmission company and between the developer there is an agreement this is the most uh, famous or bo most major kind of agreement we have for the solar industry mm -hmm. this is called public private agreement so mm -hmm. they do PPA, which is public private agreement. Under this, a 25 years of agreement is been done by the transmission company with the developer that mm -hmm. they will purchase whatever energy is produced from that solar plant for next 25 years. Okay. Uh huh. I see. What happens? Uh, they will uh, the developer bid for. This PPA means mm -hmm. they will they have to they have to uh, they have to quote their rates for mm -hmm. the next twenty five years. How much on what rate they will be selling power to the transmission company? Okay. So on the uh, L one uh, criteria, mostly the selection of uh, this agreement is done. Transmission okay. company decide which developer they want to go with. Mm -hmm. based on the lowest rate quoted by the developer. Mm. Once this uh, agreement and bid bid uh, uh, and agreement is been done, then the developer starts his solar plant uh, project or uh, setting up the solar plant. Mm. So once the solar plant is de developed, this solar plant will be transmitting the uh, power to the designated uh, substation of the transmission company. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. So transmission company, then it will, based on their requirement, they will distribute all around India, maybe in, in the specific state, because trans in India, we have transmission company, state-wise transmission company. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. And there is a national grid which mm -hmm. connects all the all the states. Mm -hmm. So each state have different transmission company. So these transmission company, once they get the power, they as per the requirement within the state, they distribute the power. Mm -hmm. Okay. So in this kind uh, kind of uh, kind of uh, business is going on with related to the solar business uh, uh, or solar investment people are doing. Mm -hmm. They sell their power to the transmission company. And there are few few people who are uh, setting up uh, uh, plants for their own use, for their own consumption, mm -hmm. who have their own, like uh, some pharma companies they have their, for their power consumption, they built up a plant. With the captive captive power plant, what they call it. Okay, I see. But mostly it's for the transmission company. They uh -huh. supply the energy to the transmission company. So transmission company is that uh, it's uh, the company which transmit the power all around the state. Mm. Then below the transmission company, there are distribution companies which look up the distribution network. 
around the town or the district area mm -hmm. so uh, uh, below the transmission company there are uh, distribution mm. and in central there is national uh, grid system which is uh, maintaining grid all around the india mm. in the country country level mm. so this kind of structure is there in india and uh, in solar industry the transmission company plays a important role because they are the actually the kind of uh, owner of the they, in it, yeah yeah they are paying for to the developer who setting up who is setting a plant so they are uh, transmission company is paying to the developer so developer. ultimately they are yeah mm. they are the customer or owner you can see i see i see and uh, what would you say is uh, something this transmission company is looking from like uh, is it um, to regularize the uh, price of the power or is it like uh, have the maximum efficiency or they want to know a uh, forecasting like when our uh, uh, like what wh what are the aspects they're looking for um, from this maybe the solar developers yeah uh, see uh, for a solar developer it has to they have to give a forecast that that is some some ask for one month hmm. then 15 then <clears throat> daily one day ahead mm -hmm. likewise uh, if if uh, i am a developer then for the tomorrow i need mm -hmm. to make the uh, forecast today itself and that oh, that forecast that one day forecast you mean oh okay yeah, for oh, the okay. next day, I see. The mm -hmm. evening, I have to give them forecast, hmm. so that they can plan their energy distribution accordingly. Hmm. They doesn't get wasted. I see. For this, they require mostly. Uh, mostly, they ask for one month, so that in general they can plan for monthly consumptions and distribution transmit transmission of energy then they ask for 15 days some 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 of them ask for 15 days also then mm -hmm. mostly the next day forecast is compulsory for every transmission company they ask for it from the developers mm. so that they can plan their this transmission system uh, how to they want to transmit energy to which location which places mm -hmm. and uh, these this forecast mostly is of every five minutes duration. Mm -hmm. So this is the energy forecast you mean? Okay, yeah. Yeah, energy from forecast. From so what plant. the energy okay. mm -hmm. plant will be developing mm -hmm. every five minutes uh, interval. I see. Okay. <clears throat> and uh, one question, uh, I don't know if that is also uh, may playing an important factor is the health of these uh, solar panels, like the PV panels, um, these are also a factor into your energy production, right? So, and uh, how is that, uh, like, um, health monitoring happening in most of these uh, solar farms these days? Because that will also give you a forecast yes. factor, right? <laughs> yeah, definitely. It plays an important role. Um, but it's not regular as as regular as uh, giving daily forecast hmm. maybe an interval of 6 months they they use drone to analyze uh, uh, the all the modules yeah. which are called solar panels yeah using drones they um, they check it and then based on that they can identify the damage or the modules which are not functioning properly mm -hmm. and uh, based on that they do the maintenance work but it is not uh, as such a regular requirement from the transmission companies mm -hmm. it is the <clears throat> it is uh, the responsibility of the developer how they maintain the power plant I only see. they they have to meet a certain amount of energy they they have committed they have to supply that 
minimum amount of energy to the uh, transmission company. Okay, I see. And I I know there is also um um uh, like uh maybe I I forgot the term right now. So, but um these uh what are then the requirements uh they have to provide like in terms of their uh, plant management. Like what what factors are more important in the daily forecasting that they have to provide to the uh, trans? Uh, yeah. Uh, mostly, mostly the energy uh, what will be generated, and uh, and the it is mostly related with the energy produced. Energy. Every five. I yeah, it keeps on, and uh, what developer do. Uh, normally we have in india some companies which which are providing this forecasting to the developers they they use meteorological data mm -hmm. uh, climatic conditions and historical data of the uh, plants to uh, to come out with a forecast for the next day Mm -hmm. So this type of companies, lot many companies are there who are providing these services, and normally all the uh, plants do use these kind of uh, service provider to get the forecast. Okay, so get this forecast with the uh, transmission companies. I see. So in uh, like a, in daily, weekly, or monthly basis, uh, the most important factors that play a role in this forecasting would be uh, like weather and uh, historical data by historical data how the plant is operating right the factors that come into yeah. that okay Meteor meteorological data also is important yeah right, the right. positioning of the sun and all yeah so the sun sun positioning i yeah. see it's quite interesting so another question that uh, might not be related into this case study i i know um there's also a big issue coming up with uh, disposing of defective panels and all, right? Uh, that is a t problem that is not related in this domain, right? I, I'll share you one incident recently. Uh, in one of uh, the project I was doing, yeah. and we have some, some panels which got damaged, du damaged during the installation. Mm -hmm. And I was searching for someone who can uh, who can manage the e these e wastes? Mm. But while I was find I, I was searching, I I was really shocked to know that there are very few players or very few companies who are handling this solar module specifically. Yeah, and you mean uh, the disposal? Uh, which which solar yeah. modules? Disposal of the PV modules, the solar PV modules. Oh, okay. I see. PV uh -huh. panels. I the see. solar panels. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right, right. Okay. So there are very few companies who are handling these e waste, mm. uh, what you call the solar power plant panels. Mm -hmm. I see. Uh, somehow I managed to find out a person who, who, who is helping me out uh, to get some quotation for this, these waste. And mm -hmm. uh, I see that there is an option of uh, some gap in this and may, maybe some people, someone can explore this opportunity uh, to handle e-waste e related to solar, solar, uh, solar uh, plants. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure, for yeah. sure. So, um, since the podcast is about data, AI, and analytics, uh, data analytics, AI, ML, so I'll just focus a little bit over there now. Uh, so, Agar, what kind of data challenges do these solar developers will face or maybe the transmission line power providers will face? Uh, first of all, the challenge is the forecasting. Yeah. It's a major challenge, uh, although it's reduced as compared to the, the it was there the complexity which was there in uh, early um, 2015s or so mm -hmm. but now it is developing um, i think some companies are starting started using ai also for this mm -hmm. and 
for their forecasting you mean right mm -hmm. yes, yes deep learning and forecasting yeah. okay uh -huh. yeah. and other than that the plant maintenance is a uh, kind of not challenge but it can be eased further hmm. right now it is all manual mm -hmm. it is done manually people are there they check go daily check visually they check but there can be some automation which can be done which will help uh, the generators or the developers to, to maintain their plant in a better way because depending on manual or visual uh, checking it's uh, sometime uh, visually it seems to be okay but when we check uh, maybe thermal imaging and all yeah um, some other other type of uh, uh, verification and checking uh, we find we found that there is uh, some problem in the right. in the system in the plant maintenance okay yeah so that is one that so is one what are these automations coming up is it like if you install and maybe it's let's say iot sensor and it's kind of recording is it something like that or how is it's being automated. Yes, um, I've seen some uh, robotic systems are there now, like uh, uh, for module cleaning, because these panels are st installed in open area. Right. So there are dust, dust, dust mm -hmm. and vegetation. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All these. Mm -hmm. So these uh, modules has to be cleaned on regular basis. Right. Earlier it was done manually. People use water and then cleaning manually they were doing but now we have the robot system robotic system which automatically senses the layer or the amount of dust settled on the module pv modules mm. and they automatically uh, do their function mm. they automatically clean up they automatically move throughout the panel and clean it up so to the required amount mm. so here Again, uh, it is all sensor based. They sense how much dust is settled, and if it is above one limit, they will automatically go and clean it up. Mm -hmm. It's it's kind of a, it it kind kind of a, a cleaning system only, but it is robotic. No manual or human intervention required. Right. So, uh, what are these uh, fractions of industry using this? Is it like widely used or uh, it's just still it just started i must say uh, nowadays 80 percent of uh, developers are using it because it is efficient and it is also reducing manual intervention mm -hmm. and again uh, movement of movement of people and vehicle around the plant it also reduced because if we go for manual cleaning then people as people have to go there clean each and every module there are there are lakhs of modules and each and cleaning each and every module right it, of course it's very very and, difficult yeah and when the robots are there they need not to worry it's automatically done whenever yeah. it is right yeah for sure for sure so yes, uh, it's uh, quite a big of challenge. So mainly data coming around the plant maintenance is what you are thinking is a big yeah. challenge, and that yes. is also uh, uh, like a noise in our in the forecasting model, right? You would say, kind of okay, okay. So um, uh, nice knowing about it. Uh, do you want to share any other interesting aspect on the data? Maybe uh, anything else <laughs> other than the plant. Uh huh. Yeah, apart from this, uh, mostly the communication system, which is used, SCADA system for monitoring mm -hmm. the plant, uh, it can be developed further. Uh, we have a lot of companies who are providing the SCADA mm -hmm. system, which is to monitor whole plants, all the yeah. equipments, but it can be further improved, which, which will help the operator or the person who is uh, sitting at the uh, main control room yeah and observing all the equipments o mm -hmm. over the monitor so it can be further developed and uh, maybe more efficient because 
we keep on facing uh, what i have observed uh, that in scada system also we keep on facing problem uh, related to uh, loss of data and sometime it doesn't work sometime mm -hmm. uh, sometimes server fails right so there's a lot of it can yeah be improved further yeah right right okay uh, it's very interesting to know about all these data so uh, maybe we come to the last segment uh, and uh, God of your experience of 17 years in the power industry. Um, mm. What do you have? What do you see now, future? Uh, how is the renewable going to grow? Maybe if you can uh, give your, <laughs> or uh, if, like if you give your opinion. <laughs> yeah, that's what we Yeah, definitely, definitely. Future is all renewable. And mm -hmm. solar is solar renewable is the most uh, most uh, elevated uh, renewable portion in India. Mm -hmm. Maybe in the next five years, the solar boom is there, uh, and everyone right. wants to get linked with the solar projects, solar industry, whether it is uh, uh, big companies mostly the uh, epcs mm -hmm. they are trying to enter in the solar industry many of indian companies are now ranking high in the worldwide in uh, production of solar panels mm -hmm. in production of inverters and a uh, lot of things maybe uh, in structures also so a lot of indian companies are going with the this boom mm. and there there is there is a good chance that people who will enter in this business in current situation definitely they are going to have that edge but it may be required that they should have some differentiator with them of course that differentiator yeah. which can bring them apart from current uh, business uh, owners or the current players who are already there. The differentiator mm -hmm. will make them grow like anything, anything. because Very this nice. is the if, this is the period where solar industry is going to boom. Mm, I see. And in and maybe in after five years or so, we can see green ammonia and hydrogen are mm. coming up next. Right after yeah. solar. Yeah, of course. Yeah, so fossil fuel is uh fossil fuel is slowly being replaced right now. I think yes, yes. yeah, yeah, already been um, on there. Well, uh, it's a very nice discussion, Gaurav, and thanks for sharing your insights with us. Um, and I hope it's the uh, viewers like it. And with that, we'll uh, end the podcast. Uh, thanks for Gaurav once again. Thank you. Thank you, Tanishta. It was nice talking to you and I hope your audience will like and and uh, prefer to watch it again and again, the insights I have shared about yeah. solar industry. Yeah, and, and anyone and, coming up with new solar business ideas can reach out to you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Tanishta, Thank you. for having me and uh, it's been a pleasure to talk to you.